are you born with the skill set to make these relationships? Is it something that can be learned? Is it, are, are, are there any pearls of wisdom that you can speak to someone who, you know, even if they're not trying to get in the, into the music industry, you know, th this skill set is transferable. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, relationships are key. Mm -hmm. What are some gems you can drop for anybody who, number one, is trying to make key relationships, and number two, how do you sustain them? Well, you have pretty robust questions with a lot of answers I can throw at you. <laughs> um, one, what I do want to say is I, I concur with you that, look at the principles and values I teach in this book are transferable to any industry, including your own personal relationships, right? It's just, but I'm already, I'm already thinking of writing another book called Everything's the Same. <laughs> and the reason why is because everything is parallel to the music business. Um, but anyways, as far as like networking and relationships, can you be taught? Yes. Um, there's also something to say about your ability to be able to understand timing. There's a fine line between being persistent and being annoying. And I think you can attest to even my dealings with you because for those that don't know, the reason I was Sean Diddy Cohn's tour DJ is because of you. Mm -hmm. um, and that was me reaching out to you saying, yo, I heard Puff needs a DJ. And I lobbied on why I would be the obvious choice to you, right? And the reason I did it, one, I was able to convince you and sell you, which you already probably believed in me, but the more I kept hitting you with different things, it was like, you know what, this does make sense. You know what I mean? But then there was also a fine line of how many times I hit you before I become annoying or nag you so much that you're like, yo, fuck, dude, and you don't even want to help me. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's time, it's like, let me let it breathe a little bit. Let me send them a reminder. Let me let it breathe a little bit. Let me talk about something else. So just I'm on his mind, but not that. And what that does is subconsciously remind you like, oh shit, I'm supposed to hit puff about Clinton. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, there's a, there's a real art to how to hit people when you need it. When you need something from somebody, the last thing you should do is ask them for what you need. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like you figure out ways the way that I've succeeded is if I need something from somebody, I figure out what is it I can provide to them that's of equal or even more valuable than what I'm ultimately going to need from them. Right. So that. it's like, like even you with, you know, the Ciroc brand with, you know, power moves and, and you guys running the whole Diageo Ciroc, you know, campaign with the Ciroc boys and stuff. Like, like, I mean, I'm sure you'll attest to how important I was to that campaign from coming up with, I literally made a Ciroc star song. You yep. know what I mean? Like, we, we, made a, we made a video with Puff and Rick Ross and Jada Kiss and Alan FAO and Black Eyed Peas and Megan Good. All these people are in a Ciroc star song. That song, another story that the world doesn't know, is when we made that song, it was fresh off the heels of the locks, Jada Kiss and Styles and them being pissed off at Puff and going public about the whole publishing yep. So like what ended up happening is I was working with that band Chester French who like everybody was trying to sign, Puff, Jermaine Dupri, uh, Pharrell, Kanye, everybody, right? And they would just ask me because they see how much I promote Ciroc. They were like, how do you, how do you have a, you know, these are 17 year old white kids from Harvard. They're like, how do you have a Ciroc deal? You know what I mean? Because <laughs> they also know I don't drink. So they're like, how do you have a Ciroc deal you don't even drink, right? And I was like, it's not about, you know, the drinking, it's about the, the art of knowing how to market and how to help build the brand. And they were like, man, that's amazing. Do you get to hang out with Puff? And da 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 like, and I was like, yeah. Like, you know, at that point, it's just like you. It's so normal to be with Puff. You don't, the allure that somebody else is, you're just like, yeah, whatever, he's cool. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but like, so they're super excited. Well, we're literally talking about that. Wale texts and says, yo, Puff's talking about Chester French. And I'm like, yo. That's crazy, you're asking me about Ciroc. He's talking about you. And in that very moment, I go, I got the idea. Let's make a song called Ciroc Star and pitch it to Puff to, do, to be a part of the song since he fucks with you guys. So right that very moment, we started producing the record. Fast forward a couple weeks later, Jada Kiss comes over my house. It's funny, when I say things like that, people are like, wait, 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 wait. How's Jada Kiss at your house in Boston? You know what I mean? <laughs> It's like, at this point, I'm already like a, a, a credible, respected DJ on radio, right? Because I had built my own syndicated radio show in 22 markets, 
and I did that on my own, which is a whole other story on how I do that. But anyways, so when people would come to Boston, they'd now come to my house, whether it's Two Chains, Jada Kiss, The Clips, whoever, right? So Jada Kiss comes to my house, and I go, "Yo, I got this record I want you to be on, right?" Because I'm always a peacemaker too. So he goes, "Let me hear it, I Sparks. Let me hear it, Sparks." Right? So I play it. <laughs> Song comes on, right? And he's like, "Yo, this is kind of crazy. I always wanted to be part of a rock record. Yeah, all right, all right. I'm, I'll, I'll jump on this, right?" So I'm like, "All right, don't. Now sit down for a second, because I got to talk to you about it." Right? So he sits down. And I go, "So." Here's what the song's about. Here's what I'm gonna get on the song, right? And he's like, hey, man, Sparks, like, what you doing, man? Like, Cause he sees what I'm trying to do, like, and I go, why don't I just call Puff? And why don't you guys just squash everything, man? Like, let's just be friends and like move on and make an awesome record. We'll shoot the video in Vegas, da 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 And like, literally that conversation got him on a call with Puff. And Puff was like, yeah, let's do the record. And like that went from them talking shit about Puff on Hot 97 to now being on a record together. So incredible story. And that's and the reason I tell that story is the art of networking, right? Had I not built a credible reputation with the individuals, when I I could never have made that work. Everything from think of everything I just said. Everything from Wale's text to working with Chester French to being Puff's DJ, to knowing Jada Kiss and building a radio show, to building my network for the promoter who brought Jada Kiss to my house because what I've done with that promoter to be on my radio show by being a man of my word and doing what I say I'm gonna do on my show. So I, there's so many tentacles. Yeah, and working with me with the Ciroc boys. Like and, and working with you to, to even be a Ciroc boy in the first place to yeah. even be Puff's DJ. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, there's so many things that I'm always juggling, like today, I've already been on six calls with six different companies before I talked to you and our call was at 9 a.m. Do you know what I'm saying? Like my time. So like to say that is because, and by the way, all my calls are like, people think of people, like most people that aren't extremely successful, they look at those successful and they think like, like for instance, you look at Puff. The average person look at Puff would just think like, he just hangs out, parties, makes records, and just like, you know, walk, points at people to do things and they just do things, right? I mean, at this point, there's probably a lot of truth to that, right? But like, for many years, like, this dude's on calls, he's putting out fires, he's arguing with engineers and producers, he's making sure this is happening, fighting lawyers for his artists, that, like, you don't know all the stress that goes into somebody, you think because they're popping that they're rich and because they're rich, they're cool and they got no worries, right? And it's like the complete opposite. It literally is more money, more problems. You know what I'm saying? Like, so like that ain't just a song. So anyways, to go back to the networking part is like, is a fine art to networking. And people just think like, a lot of people do it messy and ugly. You know what I mean? Like, and I can tell, like, even on my DMs, like, I pay attention to my DMs, I respond, I talk to people. Some kid today hit me with a DM, um, and I said something back to him. He goes, he goes, oh, man, I was shooting for the moon. I never thought you'd respond, LOL. And I said, good thing my office is on the moon, and you got good aim. You know what I'm Ooh, I love that. Right? So I like, love that, Clint. You know what I mean? So, like, I talk, and, like, now that kid was cool. He wasn't like, yo, now that I got you, bang, 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 bang. You know, but I will remember that dude, you know what I'm saying? Like when he says something or, you know, when you say something gentle or nice, right? And you say something like, hey, if you wouldn't mind checking out the link on my bio or, hey, I'm doing this concert next week with so-and-so and so-and-so, you know, in a couple months when I get my, when I level up, I'm going to hit you with the link to my video. You've got to plant seeds. You don't go into the kill right away. Do you know what I'm saying? Imagine if the first day I met you, Prez, the first day a white dude from Boston, I run up in your office, I'm like, yo, make me Puff DJ. You would have been like, man, this fucking dude out of here. Who the fuck are you? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what you would have said. You know what I'm saying? I was with Gene Nelson recently, who you know, Absolutely. right? And he was in the studio telling a story about me to everybody about, you know, kind of what you brought up about this white kid from Boston. He was like, yo, you know what I love about Sparks? Since the day I met him, that dude's been a grinder and a hustle. I'll never forget one day I'm managing little Kim. She's like in her prime. Like everyone's fucking with Kim. 
he calls and says, I need a freestyle versus little Kim. And I'm like, who the fuck are you? And you were like, I'm Clinton Spires, get familiar, right? <laughs> and he said it like that, and everyone starts laughing. And he was like, yo, the way that he approached me and how he finessed it, this motherfucker got me to go get a verse from Little Kim for him. He goes, I don't know how he did it, but he got me to do it. From not knowing who he was to getting Kim to go to the studio and cut a verse. You know what I'm saying? So like a lot of, I teach these things in my book, man. Like I teach the art of networking. But can I interject because there's, there's something in you keep, and thank you um, very much, um, You even pointing out the fact that I was able to facilitate you becoming Puff's DJ. But for anybody who's listening, that would have never happened had Clinton Sparks not shown me year over year over year that he was an aggressive hard worker, that he knew his craft inside and out. You were not just a DJ. You were also a producer. You did live shows, so you understood the concept of improvising and what would make a live show better. So by the time, in, you know, like <clears throat> so many others, every DJ in the country was hitting me to be Puff's tour DJ. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody wants, wanted to get close to him. Mm -hmm. And I didn't randomly choose you just because you were reaching out. You were prepared. You did the work in advance. You showed me that you were capable of doing it. You were reliable. If Puff said, I need you at my house at three in the morning, and you were in Boston when you got the call at 12 midnight, you were going to get out the bed or whatever, drive from New York, I mean, from Boston to New York to make sure you're at his house at three in the morning. You were that dedicated. So I don't want it to, to seem like it was just a networking thing. It was also, you were so extremely prepared for the moment. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.